Oh, I'm a sucker for a stupid little video like that. All right. Look, she made it look easy, didn't she? I mean, like, oh, look at this. I just pick this thing. Oh, like, come on. And those guys, you could just tell their manliness was fading. Like, oh, no. I mean, this little girl, she's 10 or something. She could do it. I can't do it. Um, there are people that make it look easy. Christians that make it look easy. They pray for something. Miracles. Uh, they, they need a new job. Six seconds later, they get the new job. You know, they're praying for a healing in their life. Like, God just does stuff. And then there's some of us that just doesn't feel quite like that, does it? It feels like instead we pray and what's happening and we got questions. What's going on, Lord? How is this working? What's not working? And some people make it look easy, particularly in the angle of, of healing, bodily healing. Some people, they pray for stuff and God just does things. And others like, well, why is it not working? What's going on here, Lord? Some people are just fit as a fiddle. They're 95 years old, never took a medicine in their life. And other people are like, it looks like a tackle box of all the medicines that you're taking, right, with levels of the different days. So we're going to talk today, and this is, uh, this is part of this Keys of the Kingdom series we're going to talk about, healing, bodily healing. It's a very important part. It's an important part of Jesus' ministry, and it's an important part of what we need to understand and believe as well. Let's start with this thought first. Does Jesus still heal today? Okay, there's really three groups here. Hardcore, check out these big words. We're going to learn some stuff today. Hardcore secessionists. God still does miracles, but don't expect one. And practicing continuationists. Well, hey, it's the first time I've got that right, by the way, like ever. Okay, these three groups. Okay, first the Christians that are hardcore secessionists. These are like God did those things in the Bible times. And he no longer does those at all. That's not how he works. They even try to theologically say that once the Bible was finished, around A.D. 80, 85, once the Bible was finished, there's no need for God to do miracles anymore because he, 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 he needed to do that to validate the Bible. Now the Bible is not in need of validation, so we, it ceases. Secession. It ceases. All those things cease. Well, that's... That just doesn't make much sense to me because when you look at how God works, we're still in need of miracles today. So I, I disagree pretty vehemently with the hardcore secessionists that God doesn't do this anymore. There's no point in this anymore. And, and I, I don't really agree with that. Now, the second group, they believe God does miracles, but they don't expect one. These, they'd be uh, continuationists, but they really don't do anything about it. So if you ask them theologically, does God do miracles? They'd say yes. Does God, does God heal? Yes, God does those things. But, but in their heart, they're really thinking, don't ever expect that to happen. And if it does, it happens somewhere on a mission field 10,000 miles away from here. It doesn't actually happen like in us or around us. And the proof of the middle group here is they never take actions whatsoever about healing. If we believed it, we do something with it or about it, right? I mean, if we believed God does miracles, we'd ask for one. We'd pray. We'd ask for God to touch or do something, right? So the proof for this middle group is that they don't believe it is that there's actually zero actions whatsoever in this direction. And of course, there's the practicing continuationists. This is what we would be. We would be continuationists theologically, but we'd be practicing. We, we are actively asking God, seeking God, for him to do something in us, around us, and the people we love, in our own lives, around the world, continue to do what you did in the New Testament, Lord, continue to do. That's what we're asking. What God, what God first started to do, he needs to continue to do. Okay, so here we are in this Keys of the Kingdom series. Why is this healing part of the kingdom of God? Remember, this whole series, this is the last week of it, it's about taking the spiritual kingdom that's up here in the invisible and bringing it down into the reality of our lives. Now, there will be a time at the end of Revelations where God's kingdom becomes the kingdom that's on earth. Praise the Lord. We won't have to have elections anymore because Jesus rules the whole thing, and we don't get to elect him. He's just in charge. That sounds beautiful. No more political ads. Hallelujah. That sounds great. Okay, so 
But until that day where the spiritual kingdom becomes the natural kingdom, right now we're trying to tap into the spiritual kingdom with, into a way, in a way that makes the natural where we live different. And so in the middle of this whole series, that's what we've been talking about. Healing is in heaven. There's nobody sick in heaven. There's no, there's no disease in heaven. So the idea of Jesus' prayer, the Lord's prayer, on earth as it is in heaven, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that the healing of heaven be down here on earth. That's why I am a practicing continuationist. There it is. Whew. It's a lot of theology for this early in the morning. I want to go to some scriptures out of Isaiah 53, starting in verse 3. He was despised, Jesus, and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. He held them in low self-esteem. Okay, um, this low esteem. This is Isaiah 53, written about 700 years before Jesus. A prophecy of the coming Messiah. And we see, I mean, this is what Jesus went through. A man of suffering. I mean, beaten and stabbed and crown of thorns among whom people hide their faces they say historically jesus was so badly beaten you couldn't tell it was a human being you ever seen something really grisly on like on the a facebook or some kind of on the internet and you literally go like oh by the way if you like you get your finger torn off at work don't put that picture on facebook no you know i'm sitting here at the at the table eating fruit loops and like oh oh that's nice Oh, that's real nice. Yeah, I don't need to see that. Thank you very much. Just, just got the helpful stuff we do here at our church. Okay. But it, I mean, it was literally like it, when you looked at Jesus, it was like, oh, well, that guy's been through so much, and we've held him in low esteem because, of course, he was crucified as a criminal. That would be very low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and he bore our suffering on the cross. It was on him. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities sins the punishment that brought peace the punishment that brought peace for all mankind was on him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have just gone astray each of us has turned to our own way and yet the lord has laid on him the sin the iniquity of us all he himself bore our sins. Notice 1 Peter. Peter himself quotes these verses from Isaiah. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. The reason why I put this 1 Peter verse in here is because I wanted you to know that this wasn't just like, oh, well, maybe that's about Jesus. Maybe Isaiah 53 is about Jesus. Well, Peter, that's like the guy that's like probably Jesus' best friend. He himself saw the connection here and wrote it into his, uh, his epistle in 1 Peter, how this is talking about what Jesus has done for us. See, the cross gave us healing inside and out. Surely he took up our pain, bore our suffering. Pain is koli, and it means physical sickness, suffering, machov, sorrow, pain, and grief. The two kinds, we see an inside and an out a healing that Jesus does here. He heals our bodies. That is the uh, holy. He heals our machov, our insides. So I, I like this idea because some people, Christians, they tend to think either one way or the other. That God, he only heals like that outside stuff. He doesn't really heal the inside stuff. Or he only heals the inside stuff. He doesn't really heal the outside stuff. Though the verse is pretty, pretty uh, clear here that all those things are taking place. Now, not to get too much, once again, theologically, but humanity, mankind, was built to live in the Garden of Eden. Now, back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve are eating from the tree of life. Their bodies were not decaying. Their bodies were not falling apart in any way. We don't even know how long they lived in the Garden of Eden because as long as they ate from the tree of life, everything was just regenerating all the time. And they fought, what, fellowship with God. They walk with God. They had, a, they had a relationship with God. Okay, why is this all important? Because when Jesus died on the cross, 
he was restoring unto humanity the opportunity to get back to an Eden somehow in our existence. So the, we believe that Jesus died so we could have fellowship with God again, the fellowship that was broken at the end uh, when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We believe that, but the funny thing is we tend to not believe that the same sacrifice that reconnected the spiritual things between us and God, it also co connected all the other parts of Eden, which would be the ability to eat from the tree of life and have our bodies doing better, regenerating better. So when we talk about healing, believe that God does it all. Inside, out, depression, discouragement. He wants to heal us all of those things. He's healing our outside bodies, our outside things. Theologically realize God wants to do all of that. Now, I got a really uh, interesting video here to show you. It's not very long. This is Louis Giglio. Check this out. Long story short. The tour was winding down last time around. We were in Tyler, Texas. The night was over. A guy walks up to me. I wish I could tell you the whole story. It was so of God. Introduces himself to me. He says, how are you doing? I just want to say hello. I said, it's nice to meet you. He says, you guys winding the tour down. Uh, where are you going to go from here? I said, well, I'm on my way back home to Atlanta, Georgia. He said, well, what's next for you? I said, I'm going to be preaching the next two Sundays for my pastor back in Atlanta. He said, oh, cool. What are you preaching on? I said, well, the series is on the glory of God in the human body. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. G give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow. I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist so I kind of stumbled through what I had and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like uh huh that's good and then he says well what's your big left hook you gotta have a left hook a big finish right I said I don't have a left hook yet he said oh Louie oh man your left hook is laminin and I'm, I'm totally blank on laminin and he goes Louie it's a cell adhesion molecule protein molecule do you know about proteins? I'm like, no. He said, Louis, cells organize into certain molecular structures and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body. But one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. And I'm like, all right. He said, no, Louis, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louis. It's laminin. You've got to tell them about laminin. He said, no, 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 no. You've got to see laminin. I'm like, okay. Let's see it. He said, no, no, no. You need to go look it up online. You need to go Google laminin. I don't even know how to spell laminin takes his card out he writes on the back l-a-m-i-n-i-n -I -N. this is what laminin looks like colossians 1 17 he christ is before all things and in him all things hold together how beautiful is that now somebody could say well that just sounds like uh i don't know some kind of lucky strike right just just happens to look like that. I don't know. I think it's a sign that everything in our lives, our very bodies, who we are, is being held together by Christ. He is before all things. He is holding together all things. And some people try to say, oh, well, you know, we are just the process of, of evolution and then billions of years of mistakes and a bunch of animals that got messed up had offspring with other messed up animals and you fast forward the vcr and here you are welcome to earth now i believe god was in the process can i just say that okay i got i got my cell phone here this particular cell phone has in it a gorilla glass it's got uh lithium batteries aluminum case right i mean now imagine if there was a seashore somewhere and the waves were crashing on that seashore and over time the waves crashed on the seashore just to be in a specific way that it created gorilla glass. Just the right size. 
Not only that, there just happened to be a lithium mine about, oh, I don't know, two miles away. And there was a, I don't know, volcanic explosion and a little bit of lithium went onto that beach. And it just started, because of the waves hitting it, it just started to create the lithium battery inside of my cell phone. And then you just put these things together and next thing you know, the whole thing comes together and uh, look, there's a cell phone uh, on the beach because accidentally things just kind of put together, all the raw materials were there and in the time, they just... that makes almost no sense, right? If I told you this thing was made by accident on a beach somewhere, you would not believe me because the complexity of this thing shows that it had a creator. You get where I'm going here, right? To think of the human body and to think that we don't have a creator is, it takes a lot of faith to believe that. Instead of like, yes, I guess all those things would have been on the beach, but look, God had his hand in there. Why is that so important? Because in today's world, people don't even have a purpose or a meaning because they've been told that, that their whole life is a complete accident, that they are an accident. And so when it comes to like, you're on purpose for a purpose, God made you this way, they don't believe it because they've been sold a lie that they shouldn't even be here or just shouldn't even deserve to be here. Well, guess what? God made us. That's why he can remake us. If this phone in my pocket gets messed up, I'm taking it back to the creators. Hey, you guys, make this right. And we're going back to our creator, the one who made us, to help us with the healing that we need. So God didn't create sickness, but that doesn't mean that God cannot use it. This is an important idea here. Some people say like, oh, you know, God gave me this cancer. No, no, these things are not from God. We were made in the Garden of Eden, and God didn't, if it was from God, there would have been those sicknesses and, sicknesses and illnesses in the Garden of Eden and in heaven, and none of those things were there. Does that make sense? So God didn't create these things. But that doesn't stop God from using things. Sin. Mistakes we've made. I've made a mistake. You ever made a mistake? I tell you, some of the mistakes I've made, even though some of the sins I've committed, have been some of the greatest learning opportunities in my life. I look back and I go, I wouldn't have learned that if I hadn't made that mistake. Now, was God like, oh, yeah, Heath, that's great. Send it up because I got something to teach you. No, but that doesn't mean he can't take that thing and create it into something else. You have some teenagers and they're dating and the girl gets pregnant. Yeah, let's go there. You know, uh, God's not like, woo! Oh yeah, look at that. No, he's like, don't do that. That's not what you're supposed to do. But if a baby comes from that situation, I could see those parents. I've heard the many stories. I couldn't imagine my life without this child, even though this child was the result of a mistake that I had made. That God, God just has an ability to take things, even the mistakes we make, even the things that are not from him, and make them so beautiful that in our minds we can't re realize it's not that he designed it that way it's that he's just so good at turning situations around i know if i know a guy he goes to one of our other locations of heartland had a sickness strike him suddenly well he's in the hospital they they at a certain point in time wonder if he was going to make it and then all that fast forward a little bit he has a couple of adult children that are not uh, they're kind of strained. The relationship's kind of strained between the dad and them. Those adult children rushed to their dad's side, even though they hadn't really been talking much recently. And now that relationship's being restored. Does that mean God threw that sickness on the man so that the relationships could be restored? No, it just means God's so good at taking things that he didn't design and making them for his purposes when we surrender them to him. So why does God not just heal every believer? <laughs> well, that is an excellent question. Why not? We could just heal everybody. Why doesn't he do that? Well, guys, I have no real theological, super incredible thing to teach you today, except for this. We don't know everything. And we don't know near what we think we know. We, we think we know things and we are just not privy to the God of the universe and his in intellect and his knowledge of the past, present, and future. We don't know those things. Here's what we do know. 
A couple weeks ago, we looked at Psalms 100 in this series about God's goodness and God's faithfulness. We got to hold fast. That's why I got the anchor here. We got to hold fast to the anchor of knowing that God is good even when very difficult times are hitting us. Hold on to that. Because if you start going off the if you start going off the other way, man, it gets really dangerous. Just go like, I don't understand what's going on. Lord, you have all the knowledge. I have very limited knowledge, but I trust your goodness. I trust your character. I trust who you are. And I'm anchoring myself in the faithfulness that comes from God and in who he is. So what do we do? Just keep praying and believing, no matter what you see in that moment. Genesis 20, 17. Abraham. Remember Abraham, Father Abraham? He prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, as a friend of his, and his female servants so they could have children. Okay, I got somewhere I'm going here with this. In Genesis chapter 20, Abraham is praying for these Abimelech and his wife and these, his like entourage here so they could have children. None of them could have children. Okay, well, that's a nice thing to do. And looks by the looks of it, right? And then it looks like they actually could. In, in, this, in Genesis 20, this miracle takes place and they could have children. That's a beautiful thing. Why is this important? Because God had given Abraham a promise way earlier than this that said your offspring is going to have, it's going to be so many like the stars of the sky and the sand on the seashore. That's how your offspring is going to be. Did you know they didn't get pregnant until Genesis 21? Abraham prayed in faith for Abimelech and all those people around there for God to heal them when his own miracle in the same exact kind of miracle was not yet taken place. That's, that's faith. Because it'd be easy for Abraham to be like, look, God gave me a promise years ago. That thing never came to pass. I'm not praying for nobody. I'm not going to believe anything. God doesn't do what he says he's going to do. No, he was still holding fast when he himself had not seen the breakthrough come through yet. He was believing God that it was going to come through. That's why no matter what, keep praying and keep believing no matter what we see in that moment. Just keep on believing. Things go from bad to worse. Keep believing. Try as much as we can to keep the doubt at bay. Trust in the goodness of God. Trust in the character of God. And you keep praying and, and believing. Now, of course, that's not easy to do when you're going through a hell situation, right? You know, when we're, when we're going through hell things, even in my own life, when I'm going through a hell thing, it's hard uh, to believe by faith when it's your own situation. This is one of the problems I have with like, people that sometimes preach on this in a way that doesn't have uh, an understanding of, of empathy. You know, I, I know in my own health, it's, it's been revealing. Now, did God give me some spinal stenosis? No, God did not give me this. It came from the fall of man and the broken world that we live in and me being tall. <laughs> it's in that zone. So, but, but can I learn something? Yeah, I've learned a lot of empathy because it's really hard to believe God and it's really hard to put our faith in, in a situation for healing, particularly when you're in a ton of pain. The reality of that hits us. That's why no matter what we're going through, Heath, preaching to you now, you keep believing and you keep praying to see God move in that moment. Amen? Even when it hurts, even when situations look rough, Bad, go in the wrong direction. We keep praying and keep believing. So how do we apply this, guys? We pray for others who need healing. We pray for healing when you're sick. And if there's anything you can do to help the healing, do it. Okay, first off, pray for others who need healing. And I know it's like, yeah, we know that. Well, time out. <laughs> do we really? If we believe it, we need to pray for somebody. Now, how do you do it? Listen, it's real simple. You put your hand on their shoulder. Just the shoulder, I don't know why, just... That's not weird. That's why. Put your hand on their shoulder. A very simple prayer. Jesus, we ask for you to heal this person of this situation. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. There it is. Boom. It, it can literally be that long. But we got to give God a chance. How many times we don't even give God a chance? Myself included. Some healing in my own life I'm needed. Some situation. I don't even ask God. I bet God many times is up in heaven just waiting to be asked. 
because we are the gatekeepers. We talked about that, right? Just waiting to be asked so he can do something down here, but we don't even give him a chance. Let's give God a chance. Let's pray for healing when we're sick. I know it's like, well, duh, Heath. Well, I know, but the funny thing is we don't do this or not as near as much as we should. And then if there's anything you can do to help the healing, do it. Look, we're an all of the above church. Thank God for doctors and nurses. All good things, the Bible said, come down from the Father of lights. Those are good things. We believe in that. Take the meds. Listen to your doctors. Do all of that. And do the spiritual stuff too. Do all of that. If, if, if there's some habits that need to be changed, change those habits. If there's some situations that need to be adjusted, adjust them. Do all of it. If there's anything you can do to help this healing, do so. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I want to pray for you for healing. I've got some other people here at our church that are going to pray as well. There's a beautiful song. We're going to have it played here in the background. If you came here today and you either know of somebody that's in need of a miracle, in need of healing, or you yourself are in need of a, of a healing, we want to pray for you. Now, if you noticed, I am, I'm, I'm early. We got, we got some time here because I want to make sure we have some time to pray together today. Now, here's how I want to do it. Sometimes we've had people come to the front. The only reason I don't want to do that is because it seems like when you're under the big lights, it can easily be about that situation instead of about Jesus. So here's how we're going to do it. The lights are going to come down. We're going to play this video in just a few minutes, just a few seconds. We're going to play this video. And as it's playing, if you don't need any of these things, no problem. Sing the words of this song. It's just a beautiful song. Kind of sing it. Uh, you, you don't have to stand up or anything. Just, just kind of like listen and, and put that in your heart because it's a beautiful song about uh, Jesus being our healer. Or if you're in need of healing, we're going to have me and other people uh, you know, that we've asked, specifically asked, to pray for you. And all you need to do is when you see someone kind of walk in the aisle, just put your hand up and we, will, we did this on Thursday night. It really worked great. Just put your hand up there and we'll, we'll make our way to you and we'll pray for you. Nothing weird. Just asking God to intervene and get into the situation. Or you can even stand in, in the gap for somebody. You could say like, this isn't for me, this is for someone else, and you know we'll pray for them, okay? So let's do this together. Let's go ahead and put that song on. This song is called Healer. Let's go ahead and kill all the lights too. We'll literally black out everything except for the video screen. If you need healing, if you need healing, just raise your hand. We're going to pray for you right now.
Thank you for joining us here at Heartland at Home with our online church. I hope God really touched your heart. I hope something was planted in your soul that's going to help you to really grow in the Lord. Now, if you'd like to help us with online giving, that's heartland.church slash give. We would really, uh, really be thankful for that because it helps us to do the online mission, the digital mission that God's given us to reach people right where they are at. So once again, thank you for joining us. You can make other steps, make other connections at heartland.church. There's all kinds of ways to connect deeper. I'd love to see where you take a step and we take a step and we grow together and we also grow in the Lord.